It is written in the scriptures, this is the day which the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For it is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And said Jesus, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the presence of this company in commemoration, think of it, of the 2,000th birthday of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the spirit of love and joy and celebration fill our souls. As a child, he came to us, born of the womb of infinity, wrapped in the swaddling clothes of time and space. The sovereign of stars and smoldering suns he was, whose hands had held the very planets in their paths whose fingers formed this glowing galaxy, who sprinkled the blackened sky with glistening beads of liquid light, who hung the midnight with a thousand diamond constellations, all looped like necklaces across a jeweler's velvet cloth. As a child, he came to us, born much as all men are born, and dying much as all men die, but living not at all as all men live, for divinity surged in his veins. In Jesus, humankind got a glimpse of God as never prior nor since. And we have not forgotten it. The world can never be the same again. For we have seen what God is and have seen what man can be. I wrote some years ago a song about the birth of Jesus. This child of heaven born of earth who slumbers at his mother's breast is God and man, and by his birth shall all of humankind be blessed. This child of heaven, frail and weak, who slumbers in this midnight hour, shall one day stand and stride and speak in godly, manly, mighty power. This child of heaven, silent here, shall one day with a mighty voice teach faith to vanquish every fear. Let every mortal heart rejoice. This child of heaven, born of earth, who slumbers at his mother's breast, is God and man, and by his birth shall all of humankind be blessed. From the ancient Assyrians, we learned the building of libraries and postal systems. From the Babylonians, the knowledge of astronomy and the molding of clay bricks. From the Phoenicians, we learned a written alphabet. From the Egyptians, surveying. From the Persians, international coinage. From the ancient Greeks, we learned music, drama, architecture, philosophy, and from the Romans, the making of bridges, roads, and laws. But from Jesus of Nazareth, in 2,000 years of time, we have not yet learned the ways of righteousness and peace, the brotherhood of all humankind beneath the sovereign fatherhood of God in love. And until we learn that, the rest that we have learned will matter very little. He came teaching that all humankind are one vast family, this world our home. We sleep beneath one roof, the starry sky. We warm ourselves before one heart, the blazing sun. Upon one floor of soil we stand and breathe one air and drink one water and walk the night beneath one luminescent moon. The children of one God we are and brothers and sisters of one blood and members in one worldwide family of God. He came proclaiming that only transformed individuals can create a transformed world. Only better men and women can fashion a better society. Only spiritually advanced citizens can architect a spiritually advanced civilization. I stood and watched this grisly giant redwood tree one windy twilight just before it rained. Massive and motionless 
at the root and the trunk, but its topmost leaves and limbs a swirl in the winds of the approaching storm. And I thought, the human mind is thus, though rooted in the material flesh of this earth, our highest thoughts are stirred and swayed by the winds of the spirit. Must have been back in the 1960s, we were having supper one time at 533 Diversity Parkway in Chicago with Dr. Sadler and Christie. We were talking about various things, and Dr. Sadler brought up the passing the death of his son, Bill Sadler Jr. And he lamented that at the memorial service for Bill Sadler Jr., they had no Urantia hymn or song to sing. They sang the old Christian hymns, and he said they were wonderful, but how he wished they had a Urantia song. And he said, Vern, you play guitar, you're a musician and a poet, why don't you write a Urantia hymn? So I wrote Soldiers of the Circles. And after Dr. Sadler died, for years we would come up and bring Christy to this Mariposa Grove to see the grizzly giant tree, to stand here. She said this was her favorite place on the planet. She loved to come here. And we would sing two songs. I'd bring my guitar along and we would sing two songs underneath this grizzly giant tree. Soldiers of the Circles and another song which, though written here on earth, she said they were told was sung by the very choirs of heaven above this very place. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Soldiers of the Circles, lift your battle cry, peace on earth, goodwill to men, praise to God on high. Soldiers of the Circles, Victors over sin, praise to God who dwells on high, praise to God within. Soldiers of the circles, sons of God are we, marching through the gates of time to eternity. Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball to him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. On page 22 in the Urantia book, we read, the affectionate dedication of the human will to the doing of the Father's will is man's choicest gift to God. We can give ourselves, ourselves. I sometimes imagine that somewhere in this vast universe, a glitter with galaxies and smoldering suns, there hangs perhaps a symbol of this planet Earth of ours, this planet Urantia, in some silent administrative headquarters far out in stellar space. And on this imperceptibly turning globe, I see in my mind thousands of tiny pin-like twinklings of light, each marking the exact geographic location on this earth of a man or woman or boy or girl who's made the greatest decision of all of human life, to serve with joy the living God. You said to God, I'm going to go anywhere, do anything, and be anything. You want me to go and do and be, take me, use me on every continent and country, pole to pole, from ice caps to the islands of the sea, I imagine those pinpoint twinklings of light. And yet, somebody here in this Mariposa Grove today, or somebody later seeing a videotape or hearing this on an audio tape or on radio or television or someplace in a study group, who knows, maybe years from now, as we celebrate the 2000th birthday of Jesus, somebody, somewhere, may make that greatest choice of all of human life in this very moment as we celebrate it with them. And somewhere in my mind, I think I see another pinpoint twinkling of light appear upon a darkened globe. 2,000 years ago and more, the emperor of Rome was one Tiberius Caesar. He was the most powerful and wealthy man on earth. Servants scurried to do his every bidding. The fates of men and nations were settled with a snap of his fingers. He ate from golden plates. He drank from gilded goblets. He was attired in rich and royal raiment. He was the most powerful and wealthy man on earth. Servants scurried to do his every bidding. But was he happy? I read in the writings of Pliny, the ancient Roman historian, writing about Tiberius. These are his exact words. Quote, he was the gloomiest of all mankind. 
But during this same time, during the time of Tiberius, there lived this young son of a carpenter I read about one time in a big blue book who journeyed across the land and taught faith and hope and love, taught the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, the sisterhood of woman, the love of God and others. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The kingdom of God is within, and a fragment of infinity, a glowing ember of eternity, a spark of the divine indwells the mortal mind. There's an enshackled splendor burning inside each one of us taught the will of God, that God has a plan for this planet and a purpose for human life. It's not all just some blind, staggering, aimless, captionless cartoon. There's a reason and a purpose behind it. When we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, that's what we're praying for, to align and synchronize the human will with that. And he taught eternal life. Just as a bee goes from flower to flower gathering nectar, so we are destined one day to voyage from star to star gathering light. He said to that woman at Jacob's well in Sychar, there shall be a well of living water welling up into everlasting or eternal life. Taught loyalty to supreme values, truth and beauty and goodness. Blessed are you, he said, when you shall hunger and thirst after righteousness, for you shall be filled. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened, ask and you will receive. He taught the quest for perfection. Be you therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. But he didn't say we had to have it accomplished by next Tuesday. We have this great eternal regime lying before us. And he said these words of comfort. He said, fear not. Be not anxious. My peace I give to you. I've come that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Be not afraid. Have faith in God. Those four words alone could transform every human life. And who, on the very night before he was to die, declared to his assembled followers, on the night before he was to die, he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's who we're celebrating this day, the 2,000th birthday of this Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And if we're true to our trust, they who stumble by starlight shall one day see the dawn. They shall stand in a gold molten morning of light when truth burns like a coal of fire, a flame on the rim of a twilight world, and all the sky is caught ablaze with the sunrise of new day. They who stumble by starlight shall one day see the dawn. Our little planet plunges through the night of twilight space toward the light. Because you and I, as we gather here on this 2000th birthday of Jesus, we are ambassadors from the future. We are ambassadors from the future. We have read about the Paradise and Bonus Systems. We know what is to come. We've read about the Marantia realms and the mansion worlds and the ages of light and life. We're ambassadors from the future to this present day and hour and called to help make it new. Jesus said, by this will all men know that you're my disciples. What, that you have three circles on your lapel? By this will all men know that you're my disciples, that you have a membership card in your purse or your billfold. By this will all men know that you're my disciples, that you have a five-pound blue book under your arm. He said, by this will all men know that you're my disciples, that you love one another. That you love one another. Unity without uniformity. We'll never have uniformity on everything. People will not think the same. But we can love each other. It says in the Urantia book, we're even supposed to love our enemies. I say, just for practice, why don't we try it out on our friends from time to time? <laughs> we're called to this, to love, forgiveness. We look back to Jesus and the apostles, Mary Magdalene and the Women's Corps, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We think what a time that was to be alive, but mark well my words. Long centuries from now, there will be people who will look back to us, to our time, to this very day, the first and second generations when this fifth epical revelation was given, and who are going to say about what a time that was to be alive. Someone says, but there's division and there's ill will and people are arguing and fighting. But we were called to the kingdom for such an hour as this. We were not called for a, 
a hundred years or a thousand years from now or two thousand years ago we were called for this hour we were called to the kingdom for such an hour as this to call to help make it new to be willing to go anywhere do anything and be anything god calls us to go and do and be to turn our life and our will totally over to god the greatest gift we can give on this two thousandth birthday of jesus and if we'll do that then there shall dawn upon this planet the divine dominion the brotherhood of all mankind beneath the sovereign fatherhood of god such a new age of worldwide goodwill such a kingdom of kindliness and love as shall make the mightiest empires of this earth seem frail and foolish in comparison and then shall the glad tidings echo forth from the peaks of the Rockies to the slopes of the Himalayas, from the belts of Africa to the valleys of Nebraska, from equator to ice cap, from sea to surging sea, shall ring the shout, peace on the earth, goodwill to men and women. God's love knows neither longitude nor latitude. All humanity are one. All humanity are his. All humanity are brothers and sisters. That's the day for which we work, and we're called to work to bring that day to be when the nation shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and the world shall not learn the ways of war anymore. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball, to him all majesty ascribe, and crown him Lord of all, and crown him Lord of all. Happy birthday, Jesus of Nazareth, on this your 2000th birthday. What a joy to be here. Let's take a few moments in silent prayer, meditation, and worship to thank God for the life, the ministry, and the teachings of this wonderful elder brother, Christ Michael of Nebadon, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This child of heaven, born of earth, who slumbers at his mother's breast, is God and man, and by his birth shall all of humankind be blessed. This child of heaven, frail and weak, who slumbers in this midnight hour, shall one day child of heaven silent here shall one day with a mighty voice teach faith to vanquish every fear let every human heart rejoice this child of heaven born of earth who slumbers at his mother's breast is God and man